I can tell you Union Station is an absolute mess. Metro has finally calmed down. Things are looking a little better there. Uh, the delays tonight were mostly on the Milwaukee line. And we didn't get to our hotel till 7.30. We missed our check-in, had to pay an extra $50, lost our hotel room. Um, and then we came, we were on hold with Amtrak for about three hours before we got a hold of anyone. He transferred us again. Huh. brand new year for the cinema snob and as promised we are taking a look at some more instances of the forgotten what the fuck Hollywood and it doesn't get much more what the fuck than Robert Stigwood's 1978 musical flop Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Riding high off the success of Saturday Night Fever in Greece, Stigwood sought to produce a film version of the Beatles' Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band album, which itself was adapted into a 1974 stage play. And with those other two movies being soundtrack and box office hits, why not actually have the Bee Gees star in the film? Hell, Frampton comes alive as a giant monster, let's get Peter Frampton in front of the camera as well. Do we actually have the Beatles involved? Well, uh, no, not really. But we do have Beatles producer George Martin on board as musical director. What on earth could possibly go wrong? I'll tell you what went wrong. It wasn't Saturday Night Fever Stigwood who produced this. It was moment by moment Stigwood. Which means the movie's well intentioned, but really fucking stupid. It's an excuse to get nearly every prominent rock star of the 70s, and Steve Martin, involved with a story that involves stolen musical instruments and a fight scene between the brothers Gibb and Alice Cooper. Seriously, Hollywood, what the fuck? Producers of the film envisioned it becoming that generation's Gone with the Wind. Don't worry, that sentence makes perfect sense if you're on drugs. Critics, however, destroyed the movie upon release, with Leonard Maltin saying, As for the Bee Gees acting talent, if you can't say something nice... Really? Since when has that stopped you before? Sorry guys, I don't want to finish this review. I might get too harsh. As you can see, Universal decided to blow up the world instead of releasing the movie. The flick is a rock opera, it's all told in song, except for one character who provides narration. Sergeant Pepper and his lonely Hearts Club Band. Um, God? So Heartland, USA sent the Allies its most effective secret weapon. <laughs> if Robert Stigwood is your secret weapon, you'll have a little bit of success with a couple instances of embarrassment. Also, these title cards are a little fucking jolly looking over this war footage. <laughs> According to this movie, that's how World War II ended? I have a much easier time believing this! Hell, the world's deadliest joke from Monty Python is an easier pill to swallow. And I'm sorry, I have to ask, in this universe, is this also how the concentration camps were liberated? Because that sounds really fucking awkward! Turns out all you had to do to end the war was pick up a musical instrument. Tell that to the fucking families who lost their loved ones in this war. Why didn't you end it sooner? As history shows, Sgt. Pepper's music carried through several of this town's costume parties. Hey, hey, we're here to listen to the Andrews sisters. Quiet down with your damn French horn. Because of Sgt. Pepper and his band's contributions on world peace, a statue was erected in their honor. And by statue, I mean this nice weather vane. Life is pretty sweet for Sgt. Pepper and his Lonely Hearts Club band. <laughs> Oh, thank God. Oh, short movie. August 10th, 1958. A day none of us will ever forget. Yes, I know what he means. There was 9-11, Pearl Harbor, the Challenger explosion, and the day Sergeant Pepper died. But Sergeant Pepper does have a grandson, Billy Shears, who along with his friends, carry on the legacy of this war-stopping band. 
We wondered if there would ever be a new Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club band. And we wondered what the new band would sound like. Turns out they sound a lot like Peter Frampton and the Bee Gees. I'm Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club man. I hope I will enjoy my show. Well, that's not as good. Actually, here's a little taste of a song that you'll hear non-stop in this film. Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. I don't understand the music these kids listen to today. What the hell does Ooh Kooka Choo mean? But while Sgt. Pepper and his band may have ended every single war, they still couldn't bridge the war between rock and roll people and disco people. Uh, music fascism. Those were the days. Hey, geniuses, maybe you should have waited about 30 years to pitch your bitch fit. You know, when music got fucking worse, disco doesn't sound too bad now, does it? Idiots. Sorry, I'm interrupting the story, I guess. What would you think? If I sang out of tune, would you stand up and walk out on me? Boo! Make your guitar talk! That's why I'm here. What do I do when my love is away? Are they singing to me? That's weird. Say, it's introducing Sandy Farina. Hot. Some fans deliver their panties to the performers face to face. That's always helpful. Because their music is so good, the boys soon receive an offer from music mogul Robert Stig, <laughs> I mean B.D. Hoffler, for a music contract. This band has provided peace in every single conflict the world has ever seen, and they're just now getting a music contract? And now they're off to get a recording contract and to get their heads chopped off by Z-Man. Don't worry, with the band gone, I'm sure the music will still flow in this small town. I'm fixing a hole where the rain gets in and stops my mind from wandering. Well, that's ironic. It was George Burns who has just convinced me there's no God. One of the villains is the mean Mr. Mustard, who in case you didn't know he was evil, they still tell you he's the villain. Time to admit it's getting better. It's getting better. No, oh, the CEO of the Philips Corporation is listening. He's going to use your song out of context. Time to admit it's getting better. It's really ballsy of this shitty movie to include a song that features the lyrics, I've got to admit it's getting better. What the fuck, sex bots? Initiate rim job sequence at once. B.D. Hoffler is also the manager of such bands as Lucy and the Diamonds. I bet that's the group that sings the hit song, Judy in Disguise with Glasses. By the way, when did Donald Pleasance turn into Al Goldstein? May he rest in peace. I suppose Billy should say goodbye to his girlfriend, Strawberry Fields. <laughs> yeah, that's her name. Before the full moon turns him into a werewolf. It, uh, wait, where'd they go? Are they teleporters? Huh, oh, well, here comes the sun. Uh, uh, oh, shit. Here comes the sun and I say it's all right. Billy wasn't a morning person, she would have gotten a cantaloupe to the face 30 seconds ago. I need to get you to the bus station fast. I'm tired of you waking me up like this every morning. This is the only on-screen role for singer Sandy Farina, who some of you might remember from this classic theme song of the 80s. Body talk, body talk. I love the sound of your body talk. Body talk. And for that, Sandy will always be one of the underrated gems of the decade. The band must make it to the West Coast, and since it's 1978 going on the 1912th power, they're traveling by hot air balloon. I kind of like the part where they Ralph before taking off. They probably just found out that their agents had no way of getting them out of this film. No joke, two weeks into production, the Bee Gees tried like hell to get dropped from this movie. <laughs> but why? It's the gone with the wind of its time. See? <laughs> Hell, why do they keep dying? Oh, they're fine. I don't think that's what happens when a plane crashes into you. It's okay, fellas. It's not the size of the plane that counts. It's how good the lady is at faking an orgasm. I want you. I want you so bad, baby. I want you. I think she wants him. I 
think she wants him so bad. I want you. I want you so bad. Nah, stop that. It's only sexy when she does it. The Hells Angels are here to make sure their concert goes as smoothly as possible. And by that, I mean people are gonna die. Hey, they're passing by a movie I would normally review. Even PG movies in the 70s had red light districts. Ooh, they're passing by the Elizabeth Taylor store. That's nice. Also, this was a time when every house was Liberace's house. I want you. Oh my god, a few people standing by a pool. This is crazy. This looks like if Donald Pleasance was playing Malcolm McDowell's Dr. Loomis. And you could stop giving me the rape eyes now. Time for a classy dinner. <laughs> what the hell is going on there? One of them is gonna find out if they spit or swallow. This is actually kind of a clever moment in the movie when as soon as they signed a contract to sell out the bastards, they are instantly wearing the t-shirt logo of the record company. <laughs> Might as well, it's a family movie! What starts out like Grease ends up like Wolf of Wall Street, and it only gets weirder from there. There's no knowing where we're rowing, or which way the river's flowing. Is it raining? Is it snowing? Is a hurricane a-blowing? <laughs> I only sleep on vinyl waterbeds. It has a much warmer feeling, thank you very much. Damn, this is the one time when you can actually use the phrase, you spin me around like a record, and it actually makes sense. But they have a show to get to, and I like how Sgt. Pepper doesn't even have top billing on his own show. Albums are immediately pressed, and what a coincidence. They look like the actual soundtrack of the movie. Looks like they got their first gig at the Big Disco. He's a real nowhere man, sitting in his nowhere land. Ah, Nowhere Man, my favorite disco song. I'm gonna sneeze cocaine onto Gloria Gaynor's tits any second now. Nice to know they're playing in an empty desert. I'm sure that got a great turnout. Look at all those shows that sold out. 1978 was a fantastic year for Beatles cover bands. They even made it on ass in the moonlight television. I'm glad they're showing us all this footage of them playing. I was starting to forget that this movie was about a band. And they're playing Sgt. Pepper again, too. Makes sense. There's such a small library of Beatles songs to choose from. Sandy Farina's looking a little sad because she just remembered that she's in this movie. This must be when they're having fond memories of when he used to tour as Andy Gibb. Oh, I forgot. Stupid things are also happening. This is how George Lucas gets a massage every night. <laughs> Steal the instruments. This movie's long enough as it is. And apparently stealing the instruments is as easy as walking into the building and taking them. That's what you get for making George Burns your security guard. And once the magical Sgt. Pepper instruments are stolen, the town of Heartland instantly becomes overrun with gangs and arcade machines? The hell, it looks like everything turned into a Return of the Living Dead cast party. Either that or Vice Squad the Broadway musical. If you ask me, stealing the instruments was the best thing that happened to this town. Yes, a dirty old man. Eh. Uh, is that what you're calling Mr. Mustard, or are you personally requesting a dirty old man for yourself? Why do you need that when you've got the sex bots? Maybe if you've got some robots who could sing, you wouldn't have to auto-tune them. Mustard has also taken over some businesses, I see. I think you'll find it's much better at the five-star Hotel Grey Poupon. And what the fuck are they watching? She breaks down and cries to her husband. Daddy, our baby's gone. Why would she treat us so thoughtlessly? Mm, the white people version of Trapped in the Closet is lame. Brr. Wake up, Mustard. You're scheduled for a toupee off with Donald Pleasance. Shit, I don't like where this movie's going. She's walking into Rock of Ages. I don't need to see Tom Cruise singing into Melina Ackerman's ass again. 
Say, is this the famous girl group Lucy and the Diamonds? Lucy in the sky with diamonds. And they're singing the William Shatner classic Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. At least now I know what the song is about. It's about looking at a billboard for a band where the artists come to life and start singing to you. You know, LSD. By the way, I think Morris Gibb just photobombed his own movie. Huh, well that was weird. Guess I'll find a hotel or something. I wonder if there's a hotel mustard around here. She informs the group that the magical instruments have been stolen, but nothing on earth can keep Robin Gibb from finishing a tune. Seriously, I started a joke originally had no punchline. They find out where the instruments have been set because luckily Mr. Mustard's bus happens to be right fucking there. And first up is Dr. Maxwell, played by Steve Martin. Tongue be a damn fan. People will pay you to be inhumane. Sergeant Pepper and his band are gonna be in so much trouble for interrupting this Saturday Night Live sketch. Good work. Now they all have brain cancer. Meh, still a better Steve Martin movie than bringing down the house. Something tells me this is gonna get intense. Good, they went to the Velvet Smooth School of Fight Choreography. You know, anything goes. Why did he even have that instrument in the first place? Whatever, still more instruments to save. The bass drum was easy. Must have left it. Billy found it. Gee, thank you. It's so important for you to bring that up. Why don't you go ahead and tell me that there's nothing going on in the lab from Nuki while you're at it? Bang, bang, Maxwell Silver Hammer came down upon her head. Bang, bang, the next instrument is being held by Father Son, who is, um, directing a Pink Floyd music video, I guess? He decided to go into the media business and help destroy the minds of those young people who teased him on their way to school. Now he was busy brainwashing them for FVB to build an army to take over the world. The only people who can stop him are Peter Frampton and the Bee Gees. <laughs> what? To be fair, this is pretty much how Blofeld tried brainwashing a group of women atop a ski resort with George Lazenby. Seen it better not give me a premature 70s gasm. Because. The world is round. It turns me on. Love is all. Love is you, sweetie. I may not be seeing Lucy in the sky with diamonds, but my empty cup does taste as sweet as the fudge. <laughs> God damn it, old drugs. What the hell is gonna happen next? <laughs> I just seen Barry Gibb get in a fist fight with Alice Cooper. Maybe this time it's true. Maybe now I have seen everything. Also, it was really cool of Alice Cooper to step in and play Frank Zappa for the night. This is the second time Billy has been injured and had his ass saved by the Bee Gees. I'm questioning Peter Frampton's role as an action hero. But here's something I don't understand. Let me take you down. Cause I'm going to Strawberry Fields. Okay, as you remember, she's playing a character named Strawberry Fields. So, she's singing about herself? Let me take you down because I'm going to... Me? It's a really roundabout way of asking him to go down on her. Because of their sidetrack, many of their shows have been cancelled, and this looks like Stigwood after the box office results for the movie came in. So instead, the band holds a benefit concert in Heartland to get the economy back on track. Look, even Secretariat from The Late Late Show stops by for a visit. And Mr. H will demonstrate, and Somerset's he'll undertake. No, no, we sing, not you. Oh, I almost forgot. This whole time, Billy has had an evil brother who loves singing about play money. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All the children go to heaven. So let's steal this money. <laughs> the fuck? 
There's still one more missing instrument, but who gives a shit? We got Earth, Wind, and Fire tickets, who, by the way, are literally playing Earth, Wind, and Fire. <laughs> no, no, I don't mean they're playing themselves. I mean the elements of Earth, Wind, and Fire. And who gave them guns? It should be noted, however, that Earth, Wind, and Fire's rendition of Got to Get You Into My Life was one of the few things praised about the movie. The song was the biggest hit from the soundtrack, and it even gained the group a Grammy Award in 1978. Whew, I never thought I'd say this during this film, but I got to admit, it's getting better. I'm gonna sneak into this concert with Lurch, even if I am the whitest guy here. I've got it, boss! One of the few bright spots of this movie. Let's get her out of here! So, Strawberry is kidnapped, and the boys chase after her by using the quickest way possible, their goddamn balloon. Okay, well, I guess shinier clothes are their superpower. By the way, if you take your glasses off, it looks like the balloon is saying something incredibly racist. Hang in there, Sandy. Peter Frampton will save you, I suppose. Oh, will you still need me? Will you still feed me when I'm 64? When? You're fucking 80! And you appear to be a creeper. Will you still need me? Will you still feed me when I'm 64? Oh, Sandy, when you're 64, you'll still be pretty. We hate joy, we hate love, we love money. Hey, that's what it says outside Mark Burnett's office. The remaining instruments, as well as Strawberry Fields, are being held by Aerosmith, who play future villain band, even though they're doing villainous things now in the movie's present. Come together! Again, another significant hit from the soundtrack. I mean, there is a reason I own the soundtrack to the movie. It's because music's really not bad. It's just in a movie about kidnapped musical instruments. Dude, do you mind? We're singing the only song in the movie that still gets radio play. Oh, God, maybe now American Idol will be canceled. Come on, Peter, show some competence. Save the girl. <laughs> oh, my God, this movie sucks. Bummer of a funeral, too. You can see the creepy eyes of Jack the Ripper peeking over the crowd. Really? Is that what the Beatles were singing about? Paul bearing? And I don't know if a funeral is the time or the place for karaoke. Come on, man. Stallone offered us the soundtrack to staying alive. Things are gonna be okay. And why is he now having flashbacks to the movie Side Hackers? Is there a reason that this movie is getting fucking depressing? I saw a film today, oh boy. Oh, that's why Barry's sad. He just saw the dailies. Tour dates have been cancelled, Billy is suicidal, his girlfriend's dead. I can understand why you're so down. Woke up, fell out of bed, drank the comb across my head. Um, or not, things picking up all of a sudden? Oh, that's why, he's fucking high, and apparently it's starting to wear off. I read the news today, oh boy. Make up your mind, are you happy or sad about your situation? Christ, at this point, just jump. There's no saving this movie. <laughs> there was a time when Billy Preston was known as the fifth Beatle in some circles, but after this movie, he couldn't even be known as the fifth Gary Lewis and the Playboy. Get back! Get back! Ha 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 ha! Now you have to be celibate. I've given up trying to figure this shit out. Sweet Loretta Martin thought she was a woman, but she was another man. 
Billy, I don't understand the context as it pertains to this movie. What in the hell are you singing about? Get back, Loretta. Your mama's waiting for you. Dude, Loretta's not even her character's name. Who the fuck is Loretta? Also, did this movie just cure death? Whatever. Just gives the magical mystery script an excuse to throw in every cameo in the book. And they all look like they're just reading off of cue cards because they had to get really fucking stoned to do this. So many people here. There's Rhea Perlman, Billy Crystal, John Belushi, Robin Roberts, Lenny and Squiggy, Robert Palmer. Oh, wait, hey, that actually is Robert Palmer. This is like We Are the World, but with bad intentions. <laughs> Ugh, never mind music. I now hate sound. So, this movie was kind of a bomb. Quietly thrown on a DVD with barely an extra. Look at this bright, colorful poster that was used for release, and then the DVD cover, uh, wow, they're as tall as an orange. Are they walking out of the fucking sun? Well, maybe it's because the entire country filed a lawsuit after the film's tagline was, A Splendid Time is Guaranteed for All. The screenwriter only has one other credit to his name, The Great Skycopter Rescue. Your guess is as good as mine. But the movie's director, Michael Schultz, is still to this day a prominent director in television, plus directed the cult films Crush Groove, Barry Gordy's The Last Dragon, and The Jerk 2? What? Needless to say, the acting careers of Peter Frampton and the Bee Gees never really took off, but some of that criticism was a little harsh. Since they're not really acting in this movie, they have no actual lines of dialogue, they just sing and rock out a little, and they do that just fine. Let that be a lesson to you, Hollywood. Never, ever make a musical based on Beatles music without actually featuring the Beatles and instead using other musicians, actors, and comedians. It will end in critical and commercial embarrassment. But it's okay when Across the Universe did it.